Hello, welcome to Star Wars Vlogs. I'm Beastmaster, and I'm joined with Don Chaos. How's it going, brother? It's going really good. All right. That's good to know. Today on Star Wars Vlogs, we're going to talk about Max von Sido, who is the most elder and arguably the most well-established actor of Star Wars Episode Seven characters. What do you think of this announcement? What do you think of Max von Sydow? When the original came out, all these actors were unknown, and the only big-time actor that they had in the original was Alec Guinness. He was the only well-known actor. Everyone else were unknowns at the time. He's kind of coming in as the one with experience, the one that actually has... A most impressive, and of course, you know, you've got your your Han Solos, aka Harrison Ford, who has gone on to create his movie legacy after Star Wars came out. But for everyone out there who doesn't know Max von Sydow's um, body of work, there's way too many to mention. But I've got a list of a significant amount of movies here. Without further ado, let's start this off. First of all, this guy is old as dirt. He was born in 1929. He was alive in the fucking 20s. Like, great Gatsby shit. All right, anyways, this dude was only 28 years old, and he appeared in The Seventh Seal. That, was, that came out in 1957. That's old. Now, a lot of you guys out there may be aware that he was in The Exorcist in 1973. He was also in The Exorcist II, The Heretic, in 1977. That alone is impressive. And these are three movies that all came out before I was even born. Okay, Actually, Exorcist II, The Heretic, uh, that came out, I guess, around the same time as Star Wars, no? I guess so, because they both came out in 1977. Yeah. In 1980, Max von Sydow was in Flash Gordon. But Flash Gordon is a little cheesy. It's a little... Well, we all know because of that movie Ted, right? With Mark Wahlberg and how they're obsessed with Flash Gordon. And then they meet Flash Gordon. And they do drugs with Flash Gordon. And they party hard with Flash Gordon. That's fucking hilarious. I never really got into Flash Gordon. But that movie Ted is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> All right, let's see. In 1982, Homeboy was in Conan the Barbarian, Arnold Schwarzenegger's breakout movie. How about them apples? Okay, not impressed yet? Dude was in Never Say Never Again in 1983. That's a Roger Moore 007 James Bond movie, motherfuckers. Dude is a Bond villain. Are you still not impressed? All right, I've got more. He was in Dune in 1984. That's a David Lynch film from a Frank Herbert classic that kind of has its own cult following. Just a huge nerdy fan base of sci fi enthusiasts. And we all know that Sting was in that flick. I don't know if that's a positive or a negative. But nonetheless, if you're not impressed with this guy's fucking body of work yet, wait till you hear this one, Chaos. Wait till you fucking hear this one. In 1989, and by this point, I think we're all alive now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Even you young bucks are at least born by 1989, right? Please tell me everyone's born by 1989. We're all grown-ups here. But this is one of the most fascinating uh, roles. Max von Sydow was the voice of Viggo, the monster in the painting in Ghostbusters 2. Holy shitballs. I can't believe it. 
He was the villain to Bill Murray. How fucking epic is that? Unbelievable. All right. Now, this one I actually like a lot. Talking about 1990, uh, he was in a movie called Awakenings. Robin Williams, right? There we go. Yeah. So Robin Williams, who's mostly known for, like, comedy, and uh, in this movie Awakenings, it's a little different. He plays a doctor, and and I'm not talking about Patch Adams, like, I'm going to cure you with laughter type doctor, but, but you've got... Um, Robin Williams playing a serious role next to Robert De Niro. And Robert De Niro playing a role that, that you didn't normally see him in. You know, not The Godfather, not Taxi Driver, you know what I'm saying? Not Goodfellas. In this movie, he, he played this patient who was coming out of a, um, I don't know, not a coma, but almost out of like a state of paralysis. And uh, anyways, really good movie. As a kid, I, I remember I being impressed with that movie because of how Robin Williams and Robert De Niro were able to break their stereotype, um, you know, characters. Like, they're not just playing, you know, a funny guy and a badass, you know. So I really had respect for the art of acting after I saw that flick. Anyways, moving on. I think we're all pretty much in agreement that Harrison Ford is the shit because he's also Indiana Jones. Well... Back in the early 90s, they put out a television show called The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. And I just thought it was worth mentioning that um, Max von Sydow did play a character in one episode of The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. And that was in 1993. Uh, he played Sigmund Freud. <laughs> That's kind of fitting for him. But... Another one that's really fucking fitting and a really good uh, notch on his belt is also in 93 when he played the bad guy in Needful Things. Needful Things is a really cool story from Stephen King. It's one of the few Stephen King stories that I actually read the book uh, before I saw the movie. And the book's... Uh, you know, completely trounce the movies every time, just saying. Um, maybe that's a cliche, but Needful Things is a great fucking uh, story, and the bad guy, well, the thing is, is in Stephen King movies or in Stephen King books, there is one motherfucking badass bad guy who shows up in different stories, and he shows up in Needful Things. So technically, Max von Sydow played the ultimate fucking villain, Randall Flagg. In Needful Things. All right. List of shits continues. I don't know if this one's really a big one, but I thought it was uh, well made. What Dreams May Come from 98. That's also with Robin Williams. Did you see that one? Oh, yeah. That's one of my favorite movies. Like, it's one of those really good touchy movies. That's really good. All right. Well, there you go. I'm glad I included it. Um, I did forget one. In 95... He was one of the sergeants or captains on the police force in Judge Dredd. Now, I'm not talking about the new one that came out in 3D recently. I'm talking about 1995 with Sly Stallone and Rob Schneider, which is funny because that's the first time you've ever seen Rob Schneider in the action flick and not a comedy. <laughs> but I thought the remake of Dredd was pretty fucking awesome too. Just saying. All right. This is one of my favorite movies. It stars... Tom Cruise, Colin Farrell, it's called Minority Report. It's a Spielberg flick. That came out in 02, and it's based off of one of Philip K. Dick's stories. If you don't know who Philip K. Dick is, he is the writer of Blade Runner, Total Recall, A Scanner Darkly. Uh, Minority Report is a really, really good movie, and I'd say that's one of my favorite movies that this dude's been in. They came out with um, a really, really good version of The Wolfman in 2010. Did you ever see that one with Benicio Del Toro, Anthony Hopkins? Oh, no, but I really wanted to see it. I heard it's really good. Fucking awesome movie. Awesome movie. But here's a movie that you got to see twice. Here's another Scorsese flick. Leonardo DiCaprio, also in 2010. That's right. 
this motherfucker, Max von Sydow, was in Shutter Islands. A classic. You got that's a must see. It's only it only came out four years ago. The other movie he was in, same year, 2010, was the remake of Robin Hood. The one with Russell Crowe and Kate Blanchett. I seen it. I don't really think it's anything to write home about, but I do have to admit that Ridley Scott is one of my favorite directors. This is the motherfucker who brought us Alien. And Prometheus, by the way. And again, if you're not impressed with this guy's body of work, then I got one more for you. And this is the fucking cherry on top. This dude, this year, was finally featured on the motherfucking Simpsons. That's right. Case over. Uh, he's been on the Simpsons. Uh, Max von Sydow, welcome to Star Wars. If your character lives into episode 8 and 9, do us a huge favor and don't fucking die and make us have to cast some other schmuck just like they did with Dumbledore. In the Harry Potter movies, they had to fucking replace that dude because he croaked after the second movie. Unfortunate. That's all I got to say about that. Who knows? And that's the only question is, what is who and who, what is he going to play? Is he supposed to play an old wise guy? Who knows? Is he going to play a politician? <laughs> an old wise guy. He's going to be a gangster. Gangster, he's going to be like the, uh, the guy who took over the huts. <laughs> this could be like the Godfather, but the Star Wars version. <laughs> I could see him playing some sort of military, some sort of um, government role. Right? Because after the Death Star has been blown up and after these guys uh, raise their families in a new free uh, galaxy, it's not like they're just going to get rid of the government. It's going to be some sort of new, like, yay, we got rid of the Emperor type government. And you solve the problem from the top down, then how does that trickle down to the rest of the Stormtroopers? Is it like... They all get their, you know, a radio transmission to their helmet saying, all right, psh, we're going to execute... Order 66. Yeah, so if there's an Order 66, there's probably going to be like, a, all right, psh, we've got a Order uh, 22, which means put your weapons down, pick some flowers, and give them to an Ewok. You know, psh, be a good neighbor. Psh, over and out. There's a reason because of that a lot of people don't know and because in the extended version after the Empire is defeated they refuse, some of them refuse to be defeated. Like you do have the Republic that is reborn but then the Empire is still around and trying to still stand strong because they're still loyal to Palpatine. It's like with Hitler, it doesn't matter when he killed himself, people were still remaining loyal to him to the very end. I want to say that Max von Sydow is going to is going to be a strong character, and if he is good, I just have a feeling that he's so old and he's so stoic. He's got this way about him. I mean, it's not just the movie. It's the reason why he's been in all of these crazy fucking awesome movies is because of the character that he can portray, and he's got a reputation for being a badass. Not necessarily a bad guy, but... Um, he can hold, hold his own dramatically, and much like Obi-Wan Kenobi brought that, that sense of, um, you know, wisdom. And, like, I've, I, I've been there, I've seen things. And I don't just mean, like, in the Clone Wars, but like you said, he was the only established actor. So at the time, everybody who's watching Star Wars, maybe they got a little bit of, uh, oh, there he is, Alex Guinness, I know him from this and that. And honestly, I don't know him from this and that. I know him from motherfucking Star Wars, and that's it. But I digress. This has been a fun episode. Uh, I thank you for your time. Everybody else, make sure you subscribe, like, leave your comments below, and may the Force be with you. And may the Force be with you, because tomorrow's Star Wars Day. <laughs> Maybe we should do an episode for that then. Yeah, tomorrow. We'll do that. <laughs> But all I gotta say is rest in peace, Bob Hopkins, aka Eddie, aka Mario, aka Smee from Hook. Oh, yeah, good call. Absolutely, Bob Hopkins was the shit. All right, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. See you.